Cheers! Cheers. Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches! RuPaul's Drag Race Season 10, Episode 6! <laughs> This was a fun episode. It was, well, not wholly. Oh God, no. It was also very dramatic, but, but it was a balance. It was and like, jam packed. Jam packed. Full of, I, I couldn't believe, and I kept being like, this is not rushed either. No, no. It was nuts. But in the interest of self promotion, which was the uh, theme of this episode. Buy our t-shirts. <laughs> These along with many other t-shirts are available at moviebitches.threadless.com. <laughs> Also, first things first, shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink, trywink.com slash moviebitches. You get $20 off your first month of wine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's so good. What can I say? I love me some money. I, she is the heart of season 10. She really is. I thought that was so stupid when she said it in the Meet the Queens. Yeah. And now I'm like, you know, you know what, girl? You're right. You are. <laughs> so we get back to the workroom and Mayhem has gone home. Yeah. Cameron goes, oh, she was the only other quiet one. Now I'm the only quiet queen. I'm the only quiet queen. Monique, you better learn, girl. Chirp, chirp. <laughs> she led by example. You better pipe the fuck up. Chirp, chirp. And Monet is like, girl, I ruined my outfit doing that lip sync. And Monique is like, that's cool, girl. You can get a new one that fits. That's the right cut for your body. Just saying facts are facts. Facts are facts. Love you, but facts are facts. Facts are facts. Facts are facts. No shit. Facts are facts. Love you. Facts are facts. All right, brown cow. <laughs> well, and then Monet is like, oh my God, I'm throwing this outfit away. And Aquarius is oh. like, do what you got to do. I mean, whatever you feel is right. And I was like, oh good, I'm getting like more personality from Aquaria. Briefly. You know, some. It's here and there, and I like it. I'm, I really do I'm, too. I'm appreciating it. She's I coming out of her shell slightly. And then there was a lot of like good, the kind of shade I like, just like kind of the bitchy back and forth, like, oh, you got me, girl. Like, oh, no, no. Asia. Huh? Your back is ashy. That is not cute. Hey, your talent is in the bottom, too. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Monet could have easily been all like, I was in the bottom, I'm all, sure. I'm, not, I'm taking this too seriously, I'm not having fun with it. Like, she no. could have been, you know, not made it fun. And but it was, she is fun, so. And so it was really fun. So then it's the next day in the workroom and they're talking about, Monique laughs again, her like, oh <laughs> <laughs> This laugh is unacceptable. That should be the laugh to the commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> it's something, yeah. It's like, it's like almost Santa Claus, but not. <laughs> yeah. And Miss Cracker's talking about how that should be the laugh for the commercial break. And I was like, oh yeah. I mean, someone already did it, right? They did it. Wait, wh when? The show did it. Did I miss it? Did you? <laughs> the first commercial break, it comes back and it's... No. <laughs> no. Yes. What? Yes. Did I go to the bathroom or something? I don't know. That's crazy. It was hilarious. <laughs> So Rue comes into the workroom and her Pharrell Mountie hat is back. And she announces the mini challenge, which was sitting on a secret. Sitting on a secret. Sitting on a secret. I liked this mini challenge because it was fully nonsense. Fully nonsense. And I was here yeah. for it. And it was so long. It was really long. I kept being like, like they're doing more of this? Yeah. <laughs> They're showing more of this? This is like five minutes of the show. I'm so here for watching Drag But it was really fun. Things. Exactly. <laughs> yes. If you really want it, it won't hurt. One of the things they were sitting on, like the first one is the fax machine. Right. I was like, okay, so Blair and Aquaria, like definitely, definitely have, have no, no idea. idea what that is. No idea. Never heard of it. Never seen one. <laughs> the traffic cone is like way too tall to sit on. Oh yeah, like, right. Oh, Am I oh, getting it? Oh, oh. Just, just like kind of backing into it and then. The, the eggplant? The eggplant. Oh, oh Rue, it feels it's bigger than I thought. Like, this is so stupid. Oh, bigger than I expected, Rue. You gotta use your between me down there. Ah. Uh, and then they sit on a pork chop. Yo, that was my god. It goes great with applesauce. Pork chop! It goes great with applesauce. Pork chop! <laughs> pork chop! Come on, Brady Bunch! He's like, pork chops and applesauce. Pork chops. And apple shot. Pork chops and apple shot. Pork chops and uh, apple shot. Huh? And then Miss Cracker is like, I'm Jewish. Am I sitting on ham right now? Is this ham? Yeah. It is ham. I'm Jewish. That was silly. It was really silly. Well, and it was so funny. Mm, it's cold and 
kind of flat, so Aquaria? Oh, <laughs> just got progressively like, you were just ruining their pants. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. They're just like, it was yeah. like the marshmallow. Oh yeah, the marshmallow. On like Cameron's hairy leg. Gross. It was like a lot. Yeah, they were like melting, it was gross. Oh, she's weird. <laughs> You'd think they would have given them all matching, like, slutty shorts or something. That would have been cute. Right? Put on your little like, booty little shorts booty and... Booty shorts. Yep. Sit, sit on this. You know what I love more than cake? <laughs> cake farts. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Don't Google cake farts. Asia wins. Yes. Because she knows what a fax machine is. <laughs> Pretty much. Rue says, you know, DragCon is coming up. In a, you know, uh, clever cross promotion? I guess it seems like it should be next week. I, you would think, although I think they wanted people to be able to book flights. Maybe. That's, that's a good right. idea. That's Plan good your idea. trip. You still got two weeks to make it to DragCon. That's true. So they have to do, and I actually liked this challenge. I did too. Because it was different. Yes. Uh, it, it was like a, a skill that they should know how to do. Yes. I fully agree, 100%. Where it's like, okay, it's not just another read a script challenge, it's nope. not a comedy thing, it's not stand-up. It's use you your own... Personality, your brand, your... You your have charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent, honestly. And what I really liked about it was that it's all to do stuff that they then will have to do in real life. Exactly. There was one thing that really cracked me up, and yeah. I probably the only one, but... Every time I watched it, and I watched it multiple times. So Rue was like, and I always come through merch first or something, and then after he's done with the spiel, oh, yeah. Aquarius goes, looks at come on, merch first. <laughs> I'm just like, what? Come on, merch first. She like, quit talking, she turned into Goofy, I don't even know. Come on, merch first. <laughs> come on, merch first. 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 I was like, what is this? So yeah, Rue announces that they have to break into groups of three and do a drag con panel and they each have a category. Body, face, and hair. hair. They get to pick their own teams. I kind of would have liked it if Asia had gotten to, gotten to assign. Or pick her own, I don't know. At least something. Although I will say I actually liked the way that this worked out. I felt like Eureka, Monet. Cameron, and Monet all had like a common bond. It was like, oh, I wanted this thing. Mm. And I like that, where it's yeah. like, oh, you can pick one of the other, and maybe that's like, maybe Asia gets to pick first. She gets of to one say, of the three I want to do face. face. Cool. Anyway, it didn't really matter. No. But Cameron and Monet are both kind of like, what should, uh, and Eureka, she's really become the mother hen. Yes. And like this, the sage. Well, she has more experience with all of this. With everything, but she's really mm, being helpful and is like giving everyone pep talks and just like, but not giving too much of herself away at the right. same time. But anyway, she comes over and is like, hey, let's be a group. Yeah, come on, y'all, or whatever. So their group and their body. Yep. The Vixen, Miss Cracker, and Blair are hair. And Asia, Monet, and Aquaria are makeup and face. Uh, so the three teams break up into the workroom and we get to where they catch up on the body queens first. Yes. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on is just like proportionizing a big figure. But then they ran with it mm -hmm. and I thought that was very smart and also annoying. Yep. Proportionizing. Proportionizing. Creating. Creating the perfect silhouette. Yeah. Proportionizing. Today we will be discussing proportionizing. Well, this is annoying, but yep. at least you have a plan. Exactly. And, and catchphrases always help. It, they really do. And, and so it worked, you know? And it was exactly. funny because by the end of it, I didn't hate proportionizing as much as I did at the beginning. And oh. the way the editing was when like, Monique is just like, girl. No, I definitely hated it more by the end. Oh, but did you? I could understand why it worked. Yes. And I wasn't mad. Sure. Proportionizing! Proportionizing! Let's not mention it on the next episode. Cool. They will. They definitely will. Rue comes into the workroom, and I thought this was really good. She gave yeah. everyone good, different advice. Yep. And I was like very refreshed. And once again, I was like, wait, the mini challenge was really long. Yeah. Now we're getting Rue in the, the workroom. Work room. We're also getting them talking yeah. to each other in the workroom. Like, I felt like, wait, is this three hours? And I didn't, like, what happened? I don't know. But I appreciate it. Oh, I loved it. I don't know what they've been doing with the other episodes that they haven't had time to do stuff like this. Right. If they're all like this, I will be very pleased. Yes. So Rue comes by to the Face Queens first. Yes. And Rue's just like, look, you gotta keep it quick and you gotta simple. Give them, and teach them things. Teach them things. How do you do this? How do you do that? Rue dropped little nuggets, and I surely picked up them little chicken nuggets, honey. Uh, dip and sauce. Hot mustard. Dip and sauce. 
hot mustard. And they did. Yeah, they and did. They had their problems. Yes. But uh, I think that it would have been much worse without Rue's advice. I agree. And then she goes to the hair queens. And I was like, oh no. Oh no. First, they're like, oh, we're not going to have a moderator. Oops. Rue's like, oh, I feel like that's a mistake. I mean, it literally said on the sheet that they like, gave them. Have a, like, pick a moderator. And then I feel like Miss Cracker said the most wrong thing. She just goes, You know, I think DragCon is really just an excuse for queens to hang out. So we're going to put that at the forefront. And I was like, oh, that was definitely the wrong thing to say to RuPaul. Yep. A hundred percent. I have branded every damn thing I can. And you know that's what you should be doing too. Just make sure you're funny. It's like you missed the assignment entirely. <laughs> so then we get to the body queens. Yeah. And they seem to have a plan. Yep. Eureka is very much taking the lead. Yes. But they seem to be all okay um, with yep, it yep, and yep, yep, working yep. together. Oh, but the best part, I mean, Rue was being shady this week. And I was not mad about it. Never. She's just like, yeah, so uh, Monet, you played a queen who ate her hip pads last week. But and you, you wearing weren't it. wearing hip pads. You were in the bottom too. So you're going to keep making those mistakes, girl? You were in the bottom last week. I was. So... I'm assuming you won't be making those kind of mistakes again. I will shan't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she was just like, so putting good. the fire under ass, you better yeah. fucking deliver. Yeah. She was just like, look, not yeah. having any more of this. Mm -mm. And it worked. And it worked. Monique is trying to coach Aquaria, like, because oh Aquaria's like, well, when I do my, con my when, I, when I contour my nose, I really, you know, I, I take it from the, the side more than anything else and but then sometimes I um contour. I think it was like rough. Rough. Other like there's more elements than just the Oh Corey, I want you to think so that way you're not trying to think of it in that moment. And Monique is just like, so like girl, I need you to like be able to say this now so you can definitely say it later when yeah. we're in front of an audience. Yeah. And you she need to was have just thought like, all of this shit out. Buffering. It buffering. was so much buffering. Yeah. And I was like, oh no. I know. Um not as much as like this is how this is done. Like I It improved? Yes. But it was still stilted. Yeah. Problematic. I was worried. I was worried. Eureka is a really good support system. Like, mm -hmm. if you embrace the eureka of it all, right? And you're just like, and even Monet says like, I don't know why everyone has such a problem with yeah. her. I think it's those other girls' problem. Yeah. Fuck them. Exactly. Because yes, she's loud and, and likes to talk a lot, but if you aren't annoyed by that, like if you just embrace, if, if that is too- listen. If you just listen, and then maybe you agree, maybe you don't, but just don't like ignore her. Right. You can really get along with Eureka, and she's a great friend. She yeah. seems like a really good friend. She does. Positive yeah. figure in someone's life. Right? Don't even worry about that. Fuck those days. You know what yeah, I'm man, saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Your accent, it just, you just make everything sound so sweet. <laughs> like, your accent just makes it all okay. And I'm like, I believe what this bitch is saying. <laughs> and then we find out that Monique has been making... Half of her garments. Every single one of her outfits, practically. In, like, third, in the workroom right before. Because, I mean, I guess they don't tell you what which runway it's going to be right. until the day of. Oh, so gosh. it's not even like she could be doing it the day before. I mean, I think. Maybe. So she's trying to get herself together, and she's just like... I came to this competition with glitter and Jesus, and bitch, I'm making it work. Okay. <laughs> she just has a great attitude. She really does. Yeah. She really does. I mean, it makes me sad because it's like very much like Chi Chi Devane. Yeah, no, it very much reminds me of Chi Chi Devane. I feel like Monique has an even better outlook. Yes. You know, Chi Chi kind of got down on herself. Yes. I don't have any money. So right. I'm doing what I can and girl, I'm going to turn this look. Yeah. And I'm going to sell the shit out of this look. And guess what? I'm eating it up. Do I think it's the best thing I've ever seen? No. Do I love her and love all of her explanation about what is going on with her outfit and like that she is selling the garment? Yes. Absolutely. Cameron's talking about how she really has a hard time balancing her love life and her drag and like how the joke is that whenever she has a boyfriend she's not doing drag anymore and how she started going to the gym and all of that. And they show this picture of like the before and after. Oh yeah. Crazy. Who's this girl? That's me, bitch. Wait, what? Oh my God. That's me. <laughs> what? Monet gets her whole backstory. She's from St. Lucia. Yes. And how the islands are like very not accepting. Right, which um, is very true. Yes. And Particularly Jamaica. 
Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, they're like, they like burn people. It's like really bad. <gasps> oh really God. bad. Oh, I didn't And like know. a lot of like tourism and like, like gay tourist books will just be like, don't go to Jamaica. <gasps> I did not know that. They'll be like, just don't do it. Oh. They could really increase their tourism board if they just got a board. Weren't awful, horrible assholes, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, they really could. Well, sure. Case bring the profit. What can I say? Am I wrong? <laughs> no. Thank you, Susie Orman. <laughs> that wig was a bad investment. She's talking about how she won the Miss Caribbean pageant? Something like that. that. I, I kind of rewound it. It sounded like that. I think that's what she said. Miss Caribbean that. princess, Miss Caribbean pageant, something, something like, that. like that. I won the Miss Gay Caribbean pageant. You know that. And how they put, they took a picture of her because she won. And then it, it ran in the only paper on the entire island. And that it kind of like somewhat outed her to right. her family. And then she lied. That was kind of unfortunate. Like she even said, like, I should have just yeah came out and just said it then but she kind of like you know danced around but it, it seems like she still hasn't told them no and is afraid to well i mean they know now in retrospect i should have just said hey i'm a drag queen i mean apparently everyone else in her family knows right and if the islands are that unaccepting that is scary yes that is true well, although I, I feel like and stuff. often in experience it's once you love yourself enough to say this is who I am regardless of what you f feel about it right. is when they have no other choice but to accept you. It's when you right. give them the option to not accept you. Know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. When, you, when you're apologizing for it to them, then it's problematic. If you're like, look, bitch, this is what I am. This is what I do. I'm the fucking goddamn Miss Caribbean pageant winner. Princess. Flossed in paradise. Not sure. I couldn't quite catch what it was called, but it was something to that effect. Yes. Flossed in Bye. <laughs> Come in. Come in, Ruby Rod. Oh man, I do kind of want someone to do Ruby Rod on the runway. Oh. Like yes. Yes. A full yes to that. The hair. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Leopard. Oh my God, full yes. So quick commercial break, and we'll be back with the Dragon panels and hats. Fantastic. Incredible. Hats. Incredible. Uh, not a branding moment with The Incredibles, Missed Opportunities. Hats Incredibles? No, you're right. I am now imagining, because they have had, um, on Project One Way, they've had Betty Boop recently. Oh. Like, they, they sort of imposed her onto the runway, and she, she came out and was like, I'm Betty Boop. Which, you know, what the fashion industry is really into is, like, Betty Boop. Was I'm confused. What? In the clothes, they put the... No, like... Like, Alyssa Milano came out and was like, guess what? We have a special guest this week. Betty Boop. And then, like, the cartoon of Betty Boop appeared. What is this? Some, like, Gene Kelly musical? What's going on? <laughs> la, 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 la. You see? It's easy. It was weird. <laughs> and then it was weird that they were like, now you have to update Betty Boop. And it was like, from the 30s? This is weird. <laughs> That's really like, weird. Like, what's happened? So now I'm imagining Edna Maud like... Edna Maud. Like, super... Like, as one of the judges. Just like, no capes. Now, that... And that would have worked because there was a lot of capes on this There program. were, although I liked some of them. I didn't mind some of them. Um, that would be really fun, right? though. I like that idea, yes. Or even if she just came out with Rue and was like, meh, what's that thing? <laughs> I don't know, Pixar and Drag Race are really gonna... Yeah, have a, have a mess. I mean, now, though, I am here for a Pixar drag movie. Ooh, yes. So anyway, commercial break and we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, Rue walks down the runway in this pink, reflective, iridescent... She sort of looked like one of, like, Gem and the Holograms, you know, it was very, uh -huh, like, sure. 80s, I'm in a band, and I'm cool, you know, and it was just, like, cute. It was cute. She announces Kumail Nanjiani and Emily Gordon are the guest judges. I did love that Rue was like, so. What do you think of Michelle's Silicon Valley? <laughs> <laughs> Exquisite. I, very hard to not look. <laughs> oh, my God, it was so stupid. I mean, it was right there. It was right there. I love when Drag Race makes straight men uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, in front of their wives. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, and then it was pretty clear that, like, Emily was a, a bigger fan. Yes. You know, yes. I, I mean, they both seemed to be fans, but the, she was clearly more obsessed. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciated that. Yes. She went all in on some people and was like, this is what's up. Mm hmm. By the way, if you haven't watched our Big Sick review, you can watch it right there. Oh, yeah. I did think it was funny. So then Rue. 
is like... We challenged our queens to create RuPaul's DragCon panels that make you go, whoa! Whoa! And yeah. I was like, is this a Joey Lawrence on Blossom reference? Whoa! Is this... Is it sort of Cher? Whoa! I like, couldn't figure it out. She was like, whoa! It's weird. <laughs> Maybe it was a Joey Lawrence on Blossom reference. I mean, Maybe. that was like a thing. Ru likes her old references. That's true. Whoa! So first up is the Body Queens. Eureka comes out, she's the moderator, she's... Right away you're like, oh I okay, like her. This is fun, yeah. Look how fun she is. And Monet seems to be in a better place and Cameron, while timid, seems um, relatable. Yes, I agree. You know, I was still like, oh, I still, I like you. You, you know, she wasn't so nervous. No, and I thought... That it seemed uncomfortable. She was just seemed to be being herself. Yes, and I thought that she gave the most helpful advice. Like, the most information. Uh -huh. Where it was like, oh, okay, this bitch has learned a thing or two. It actually was interesting for me because I, this was the point where I really was like, oh... I think I have been taking for granted some of the work that she's been doing with her body mm -hmm. and not realizing just how, how talented she yeah. is. I try to proportion my body after superheroes in comic books. Just that nice big bust, that tiny little waist, and big old hips. And when it comes to my bra, I just sew the little bra inserts from the craft department so I can literally strap it on and go. Yeah, and then Monet was fun. So I come from a long line of big booty Judy's, my grandmother, my great great grandmother, my great 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 grandfather. <laughs> Talking about putting, you know, if you get a run in your stocking. Right, then you, you don't throw them away. You, you put people, them in your, make your own your, chicken color. And put it right here in the pocket, you know what I mean? So you was looking at a nice cleavage. Can we see that? I, did, I like that Cameron was like, oh, you got, this bitch got tricks for tits. Yeah. Got tricks for tits. And I was like, good for you, Cameron. Yes. You're getting in there. Yes. Girl, she has tricks for tits. Yes, Come tricks for tits. <laughs> and I thought Eureka was sort of the most, uh, engaging story-wise. You know, she was talking about how she's already a big girl. So when right. she started drag, she didn't want to, like, add more weight and, and width to herself so she didn't pad a lot but she found out that really you really have to. have to you have to pad for a silhouette yes to create the silhouette you want and this was the perfect challenge for her because like we've said every episode maybe this yeah. season is that she knows how to fucking shape her body mm -hmm. and it's true and it really works mm -hmm. it really helps to provide that like silhouette and that illusion. Yes. And I'm giving you cinch and hip and butt and I'm sweeping every hallway as I walk through. <laughs> and then we get to the question and it was like, oh Jesus Christ, is this the Miss America pageant? Well, that was literally Eureka's reaction. In today's political climate, oh, why is drag so important? And then I thought she gave she, a great answer. Yeah. She recovered from the shock of like, who are you? What's happened? And she talks about, <laughs> I mean, it was like, what? Oh God. People celebrate drag with us because it's a way for them to escape and it's a way for them to feel like they belong in a political climate where right now, none of us feel like we belong truly. Amen. After she took this, fielded this question perfectly. Exactly. I was like, oh. Oh, so, so Eureka won. Win. <laughs> then they have to do their demonstration with Bryce. This was silly. They this were really so silly. the most um, hungry for him. <laughs> I am trying to focus on that D. <laughs> On that D. Okay. <laughs> Cameron's like, hold on a sec, I'll just be back here. Don't pay attention to me. Yeah. She's like, was she talking to him? I couldn't. I was like, I think she's talking to him behind that like room divider. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> well, and then I loved that Eureka, then he comes out with and she's like, oh, you did a good job with the talk. She's like... So yeah, I think they all really worked well as a team. Yes. And each of them got a moment, nobody railroaded anybody. Well, I think also, sorry to railroad you. Oh um, yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> yeah. I think also what was really successful because the next team tried to do something similar, mm. but what worked for the body queens is that each of them told a story about their body, yes. but all of their bodies were different. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, well, I can tell you what padding and body and whatever means for me, Yes. while telling you something different. About myself too. And about myself and about something that like is not what you've already heard. Yeah. Whereas with face, it was kind of just like, well, this is why I'm into makeup. And I didn't find that as helpful. Yeah. So, yeah. Next up, Team Face, Monique. <laughs> I mean, she comes out like oh. a cannonball. Yes. She felt right at home. Oh, yes. <laughs> this segment is called Painted for Filth, honey, or as I like to call it, Painted for the Good Seats, Painted for the Cheap Seats, and Painted for the VIP, okay? I would love to see her MC a thing. Anything. Yeah. A anything. I would watch, like, sports if she was announcing it. Yes. 
But like actually that might be a great idea. I think that's like a fabulous idea. Just like having oh her- Oh my god, like if VH1 did their own viewing of the Super Bowl, but like drag queens were the commentators, I might actually watch the Super Bowl. Sure. Is this a great idea? Have you seen those videos online of like that guy that- the cooking videos where it's like, and now we're gonna make this gross casserole. Oh! Why you put all the pickles on there? Oh no. <laughs> oh! Y'all been that- Oh, this is nasty. You're gonna put sour cream in the what now? And it's just like, it's really funny. I would like Monique doing that with pretty much anything, but also sports I think would be hilarious. Because then there's ample opportunity to like ogle every now That's and then. That's what I'm saying. She would just be like, mm, yes, look at that thigh meat. You know, it'd be great. <laughs> Stunning. It would be great. So anyway, so Monique, Aquaria, and Asia. Well, I love <laughs> so Monique is introducing Asia and she's like, you've probably seen her in a pageant. She probably beat you with her Danny Glover illusion, Miss Asia O'Hara! <laughs> This was the right kind of shape, you know, it's like... Yes, it was like fun. Yes, it was like silly, it makes you laugh, rather yeah. than like, well, we'll talk about it. Yeah. So she announces both of them, and, and Asia and Aquaria both sort of tell their story about why they like makeup, and they were both kind of fine. It was kind of like, okay. I became a Chanel makeup artist, and day in and day out in Dallas, I was putting rouge on 70-year-old white women, and <laughs> now I am a 70-year-old white woman. She was like, oh, I used to do makeup for Chanel, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I will say that when she first said that, I was like, Chanel the drag queen? Well, hi there. I am the delicious Miss Mandarin. <gasps> mm. <laughs> right. And I was like, oh, no. Oh. Okay. The much more famous other Chanel. Yes. And then Aquaria, the same thing. She's sort of like, well, I used to do my makeup because I just taught myself. Right. So I would take pictures on my webcam, and because I was good at computers, I would Photoshop my eyebrows in different places, and the next time I would do my makeup, I would apply that. So through trial and error, I got here. I think that what would have really helped is if instead of just being like, this is why I like makeup, if yeah. it was like, well, for you know, my face. Exactly. Or my biggest struggle was always lashes. So like what I had to do was figure out that like the hair dryer is my best friend. It's like your biggest problem is lashes. I cannot get my lashes to go on for the life of me. <laughs> I've, it's hard. It's because I have already fabulous lashes. Lush, lashes. They just want to push everything up and away. <laughs> so that would have been helpful. Yes. But yeah, they should have broken it down and been like, what what do you want to focus on specifically and like something that made like for me when Monique was then like one of my friends said look instead of staying up late at night jerking off paint your face <laughs> and, bitch it worked okay she looks stunning that was more relatable it was funny. at least funny yeah 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 my problem was that those were all funny stories or somewhat funny stories varying right. degrees of of interesting and funny stories yeah they weren't very personal and it wasn't helpful it wasn't instruct like they should have said okay we each have to pick a different tip Yes. And then create a personal story around that. Yes. And that's what the body queens did, and that's why it worked so well. Mm -hmm. Because they had time to do both. What happened with this was that they ran out of time after telling all these stories. It's like, okay, now we gotta do the demonstration. Also, I'm over here with a hair dryer doing was, my lashes. It was like, I'm doing a glitter lash. Like, too much, too. I was like, da 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 da. I mean, you saw Michelle being like, hi, too much. Too right. Process. <laughs> like, it looked like her head was in Monique explode. Monique is running around behind them. I'm like, what is going on? It became messy. Yeah. I still don't know what to do with the hair dryer. Well, it's supposed to dry the glue. But wouldn't it blow it right off your eye? Not if you do it right? Question mark. When just Monique was doing her demonstration, I was into it. You know, she's over there with Bryce and she's just like, we're gonna give you that shimmer with the, yes. the ooh, ah, ooh. sensation. Yes. And you put it up on your, I mean, Rue was living for everything yes. Monique was doing. Are you wearing foundation? Yeah, you are. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three brushes, tap, tap, tap. You know, like it was just so fun. And then it became ping pong between Asia yes. and Aquaria. Yes. And it was just like, ah. Well, because they also weren't doing it on him. Which I thought was, when she was like, I, when she pulled her lash off, I was like, oh great, she's gonna go put, put it, it on, on Bryce. Bryce. No? Oh, uh, that seemed weird. It was weird. I was like, so who, who's doing his makeup now? And then the question 
uh, was like, what can I, as a, just like a woman like me, learn from a drag queen? Right. And I liked Asia's response. She said, you know what, just try something different. If it's a Saturday night, you're not going anywhere, try a different eye, or try a different color, or try a different lipstick. So try new things. And don't be afraid to try it. Right. And I was like, well, that's, that's good advice. Yes. And then I thought Aquarius' advice was less successful. Do whatever makes you happy. And if you look like a clown on the street, but you feel great, that's what's most important because, you know, fuck everyone else. That's not really okay. great advice. No, particularly to a woman. <laughs> who's putting on makeup to feed into societal constructs of gender and you know vanity and so like sure but and also I feel like Asia had already said that yeah in a much more eloquent way I think the biggest problem was that they didn't work as well as a team yeah and that started to really create them falling apart mm -hmm. so next was the hair team <laughs> This was I was like, oh no, they should have really put the body team last. Because I feel like oh, the audience yeah. had turned. Oh boy, yeah. I mean, eventually it did. It, did. it, really it wasn't great. Yeah. They were like, we hate you now. We got to see all the best queens before you. They come out. Blair looks like Ariel. Ariel! Ariel! Her wig seemed huge. Mm -hmm. And I get it. But her wig seemed gigantic. And Miss Cracker's wig also seemed gigantic. Pretty big, yeah. If you're doing wigs, shouldn't each of you have a different hairstyle? That'd be great. Or like, this is how you do an updo in a wig, and this is how you do a downdo in a wig, and this is, I don't know. A plan? Information? <laughs> thoughts and ideas <laughs> expressed? <laughs> Rude. But accurate. But accurate. We are here to make your wig life better. <laughs> now who the fuck are you? My name is Blair St. Clair, and I'm a wigaholic. It just took so long. It was like they were doing a skit. Yep. It was simultaneously very scripted and like bad improv at the same time. I'm a wigaholic. You wouldn't know by looking at you. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna get you She's later, not. bitch. She's thirsty. She needs a little extra help. This is her moment. That whole Merkin, African American, like <sighs> was all planned. Right. And yet it felt like bad improv. It was so bizarre. I think the main problem was like they weren't being them. Like they weren't like, I'm gonna tell you a personal story about me. It no. Was like, we're drag queens doing a skit about They were trying to be like hair. fun drag queens that people would want to hang out with. And what about you? Blair? Saint Hair? Well, I do declare that. It honestly felt like some sort of weird like radio program where it was like, and here's this zinger, you know? It, well, it, it, that was, I'm Coming not... up next, the shadow knows. It was like weird. <laughs> it was weird. Like if you just listen to the audio, yeah. it was some sort of weird skit. Yeah. I've come to terms with the fact that I'm not a natural blonde. <laughs> not everyone's able, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm ready to turn my wig woes into wig wow. wow. Just be yourselves. Sure. Just be authentically you and tell me a story so I can relate to you and a tip that helped you. It was bizarre. It That's was. the point of DragCon. Yeah. Sell yourself. Yeah. Yourself. Yeah. You. I don't know. And then, oh, I mean, I thought this was really bad too. So then the question. I just wondered if you guys had any advice for like baby queens with wigs. Which I, actually, I disagree. I think that's a great question. Oh no. Because I'd still love to know the answer no. to it. I thought it was a great question. I thought the responses oh, were terrible. Terrible. They were no responses. Just uh, do one or two things, any things, between taking them out of the bag and putting them on your yeah, head. Yeah. Just do something to the wig. And it was like, that's not advice. Well, then the rest of the advice was to get advice. Definitely seek out any kind of extra knowledge or education you can get. Listen to the old queen. Blair just goes, well, seek out knowledge or information. And I was like, that's what he's doing right now. <laughs> he's literally doing that. And you are not giving him an answer. Part of it was I think Blair was nervous and is a smaller personality and is very sweet and so when you pick on a sweet sure, person you sure. seem like a you real seem, dick exactly you know and so true. it was just like quiet sad blair and her giant disney hair like you know and they were just like you know or whatever and it's like oh i'm sad she's still wearing that same t-shirt just with a few sequins right now she's lovely this is great well yeah and then like miss cracker's thing of like oh and she's still wearing that t-shirt with rhinestones and i'm like that's what I think. It wasn't funny. No. Even when they weren't being shady, like, right. she's talking about, she doesn't, she didn't, like, commit, like, when she's talking about putting the wig on Bryce, and she's like, it's like a bank robbery. You just need duct tape and, like, a ski mask. I was like, well, that's funny in theory, but she didn't, like, sell me that joke. No. 
It's just like preparing for a bank robbery. All you need is some duct tape and some stockings. Here we go. Take this duct tape. Ooh. This is great. There's a funny thing. Yeah. That I don't know if you saw it, of Ms. Cracker in the workroom or getting ready for the runway. She has the stocking on her head, yeah. and someone's like, I love an uncut Jew. <laughs> It's like finding a unicorn in the wild. <laughs> the biggest problem I think was they didn't give me any information. No. Or that's I mean there's helpful that, tips yep, about you know how to do it. and then at the end with the and you get a wig and you get a wig I'm like can we retire that Oprah joke I'm I'm good. You get a wig and you get a wig. You get a wig. I think I'm ready. Sure. For that joke to die. Also it was so weird how they'd like wrapped up and then Blair's like, oh, but actually wait. Oh, actually like one more thing to kind of like tell you. So um, yeah, because you guys have been such a great audience, I've we kind of want to help you guys out a little bit. They didn't have a plan. No. And I feel like they didn't work as a team. No. And um, they deserve to be in the bottom. Yeah, it wasn't great. No, it's pretty bad. So another commercial break and then we'll be back with Hats Incredible and Untucked. <laughs> First on the runway was Cameron Michaels in this outfit that wasn't my favorite. No. I thought, so she had this like gyroscope fascinator. Yeah. And I was like, that's cool. I really loved the way that it moved. Yeah, it was, it was like a gyroscope. It was really fucking cool. It was really cool. I mean, she did have to keep kind of... Giving a little twirl, but that's fine, whatever. Sure. In general, I felt the hats could have been bigger. Yeah, agreed. Not across the board, but in general. I thought this outfit was like, meh. Yeah. And I was so glad that Emily Gordon called it out later. Michelle was like, I liked it, it was different, whatever. And Emily Gordon was just like, if you took away the galaxy head, it looks very similar to her look that she had during the panel, which was just a swimsuit with heels. I mean, it looked like She-Hulk's outfit. It was like that purple and, and silver. And I was like, I mean, if she went out there as She-Hulk, here for it. Like, so here for it. That's yes, fun. wouldn't that have been amazing if yeah. she had painted herself all green? I mean, then the gyroscope really wouldn't make sense, but no, that there's something wouldn't. else. Sure. I'm here for Cameron to do She-Hulk realness. I think that's just so cheeky and Smash time. <laughs> She-Hulk smash. <laughs> that's all she says the whole time. It was a bit repetitive, but... Uh. <laughs> but when you punch Miss Cracker in the face, I really laugh. <laughs> <laughs> So then next was Monet Exchange, and I loved this. Oh, yes, yes. I, it was great. Yeah. I think this is my favorite of her runway looks. She's like a 90s, like, fabulous church lady. If the opening credits to In Living Color had, like, a fabric, that this would be it. That's true. Again, I thought her hat could have been bigger. Sure, sure. But, I, you know, I liked that it all went together, and it was mm -hmm. very fabulous, but, like, the hat was a little small. Her silhouette looked better than it's ever looked. Yep. She got the pads right. Yep. The print looked really good. I mean, I was, like, here for this. I was, like, yes. I agree. I, I really loved it. Next down the runway was Eureka in this houndstooth bodysuit. Oh. I, I liked this. I liked it. I was, something was a disconnect. Slightly for me. She was like talking about it and she's like, oh, I'm in this like samurai. I'm serving you samurai warrior realness, honey. What? That's what I. I said, huh? I mean, I guess the, she kind of has like shredder shoulders on. I love the shoulders of the love cape. Love the shoulders. And then she's like, kind of wearing a rice patty hat. I couldn't figure this out. I couldn't figure out the hat. I mean, it definitely was more Carmen San Diego than. <laughs> The Ninja like, Warrior or whatever. It's like if Carmen San Diego was much easier to find. <laughs> I mean, someone posted that like the side by side of like her and Darkwing Duck, and I was like, yes, yes. I didn't understand the red contacts in her eyes. No. Still don't. Still not sure about it. I thought it looked impeccably made, expensive. Yep. I like the hound's tooth. You know. Yeah. I was not mad at this. I just wasn't obsessed with this. Agreed. Something. I think in the like, what are you telling me category was missing. Because I was like, Samurai, huh? Fair. Executive business Joan Collins dynasty bitch. Yes. Absolutely. On vacation in Japan? Sure. So the next was Aquaria. This made me laugh. I really like this. I really like She this came was, out and I was like, ha! Yeah, it was like some Joel Grey meets like, you know, the magician's it should be sure friend. It was the bunny coming out of the magician's hat. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was really cheeky and, and fun. 
maybe it needed a colorful bow tie instead of a black, I don't know, like something about the just black pants and, and the tuxedo dicky. It, it becomes a little simple and it yeah. seems like a theme mm -hmm. where it's like, if this was just a look that we'd seen her in after four weeks of other stuff, yeah. that'd be great. But we saw her naked with thunderbolts taped to her yeah. and it's like, so, I would just like to see something different, but what I if, still really liked it. What if she was like dressed like a Playboy bunny? What if she was dressed... She had the hat. Well, I was going to say, what if she was just as, dressed as Jessica Rabbit? <laughs> like, give me more, like, real voluminous so Jessica... Roger and Jessica <laughs> She's their child? This got weird. I loved her, like, giant spiky eyelashes that yeah. were like, I don't know, whiskers. I'm not sure, <laughs> but... I liked all, I really liked a lot of this. Yes. Then next down the runway was Monique Hart in this glittering. She looked like a birthday present. Yeah, I mean that's. I think. Just, I think. Um, Kumail was like, like, "Oh, there's my wrapping paper or whatever." She just always looks so happy and yes. selling every moment of the runway that she can, and she really does. Like she really does sell it. I agree. Certainly not, you know, an outfit to remember for the ages, but. She's talking in her voiceover, and she's just like, the top is saint -Tropez, the bottom is, I mean, oh my god, look at these legs. legs. Bitch, these legs, honey, and this thigh meat, get into it. The bitch looks great. Like, she feels herself. She is feeling herself. And so much and so out loud that it's very hard for you not to feel her she's as She's contagious. Well. Yes, it you is. You just want to, yes. you want to root for her. Yes. The thigh meat, get into it. <laughs> the bitch looks stunning. Speaking of stunning, oh. next up, Asia O'Hara. Oh my god. Oh, I gagged. Gagged. Literally, the group of gays was just like a... <gasps> ah! It was just everything. Well, I love that um, when they're being judged later, it was like, Asia, good job. Uh, like, yeah. I need to, we need to address that your hat. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Anyway, now you can go back and be safe. <laughs> I'll say this. Fucking love the hat. Thought it was everything. This huge dandelion thing. Loved it. Didn't understand the little orphan Annie wig under it. You, you didn't notice, did you? I don't think I noticed. And I was like, why? I would prefer just a bald cap. Yeah. Again. It was like, a, that was confusing to me. But um, I thought this hat was everything. It was really the only show-stopping hat of Ab the night. Absolutely. We're just like, oh my god. I will remember this hat forever. I mean, you saw Kardashian's hat, right? Holy shit! So she posted what she would have worn, and it's amazing! She did a whole Dia de los Muertos thing with her faces painted in this huge off, like velvet sombrero with candles going around. I mean, it was everything, and I was like, oh, that's oh. Incredible. That incredible! Oh my god, I love it! Oh, it was good, and I was like, what the fuck? There was a lot of tiny hats. Next was Ms. Cracker, Brie, Brianna Cracker. Brianna Cracker. <laughs> In her My Fair Lady, once again, um, she decided to give herself the added challenge of making an outfit or and or accessory out of hair. Yeah. And I don't know why. I don't entirely know why. Just to show I off. I liked this. I thought it looked really I cool. I mean, it was like beautifully tailored to her body. Yes. Expensive looking. Yep. I mean, it was like, oh, you're my fair lady. I'm looking at this right now. Looking at this fabulous huge fucking hat. Huge fucking hat. If it was hat. a huge fuck off hat made of hair, yes. Even I mean, if it's not made of hair. Even if, if it's she's wearing this huge, huge fuck, fuck off hat, hat and that outfit, I'd be like, yes, bitch. She, she worked. And she's just like, you could dance all night. That's right. <laughs> the runway and she's just like, move your blow my arms! <laughs> Come on, Dalva! Move your blooming arms! Like, where was her umbrella? Yeah. It, it was like 99% there for me. Um, like, because it just fit incredibly. It did. And I liked that, like, her wig was the same exact color, so it looked like it oh, was it, her, yes. her hat. Her hat was her it wig. Was her, you yes, know, like, yes. I liked a lot, a lot about this. I think the hat could have been bigger. I agree. And a parasol would not have hurt. I would not have said no to a parasol. Exactly. Never say no to a parasol. <laughs> well, and I certainly think this is absolutely why she wasn't in the bottom. The outfit. The outfit. Oh, 100. Lit literally 100. I mean, Michelle was like, well, if you could put her and the Vixen next to each other, then she wins. Yeah. I was like, that's, yes. 
<laughs> Love you. Back to the back. So the next was Blair St. Clair. And I thought this was fine. I thought it was nice. really cute. Yes. I think it was uh, a shame for Blair that she came right after Miss Cracker. Yeah, because they, they looked were, so similar. They were very similar, but Blair's wasn't as exciting. It was very Hello Dolly, you know. Yep. The hat was bigger. Uh-huh. And she had all the big tool yep. wrapped around her. I found it hard to see what it was. A little bit. It's all big, white, yeah. voluminous fabric. I didn't think the short skirt helped. No. It looked weird with the big giant yeah. turn of the century hat. I don't know. It was a disconnect for me. Who is she and where is she going? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe if it was long and then there was a quick change into the short skirt. Ooh, that'd be kind of fun. Sure, that's fun. That's fun. Sure. You know? Sure. Um, maybe a hat reveal. Now that would have been ooh, fun. there was no Why hat. Why not have a smaller hat under the large Hats hat? on hats. That would be like a cheeky like, oh, wigs on wigs, no, it's hats on hats. That yeah. would have been amazing. Yeah. I'm, actually, I could have seen Monique doing that. Yes. If she if it, played yeah. it up. But just like come out with a huge fuck off hat. And as you go, you just, like a Russian nesting doll. Yes. I'm just here for it. giant hat. And as you take them off, the hats get tinier and tinier. And then so it's just like a little a ungina little, hat on a bald cap. A little cap. ungina cap. Beep, beep. Yes. So yeah, I thought Blair looked really pretty, and her wig was very cute, and it, there was nothing like bad about this. No, it just looked like a lot of fabric. It did, and I'm sure there was a lot of detail in there that I couldn't see. That was like, yeah, yeah. So then last was the fixin, and I didn't like this. You know, I didn't hate it. I like the idea of, uh -huh. oh, I'm gonna make an entire outfit out of hats. Again, you're giving yourself an added challenge that you didn't need to. Sure. This was not a make your outfit out of hats challenge. Well, I felt like, didn't she do something kind of like this and then- It looked like her pool toy outfit from the first week. Exactly. Which I didn't love either. No. Personally. If this had been a make your outfit out of hats challenge, hey, you did a pretty good job. Yep. But this is a bring a fabulous hat outfit and it just looked crafty. Yep. Um, and her wig was flat, and you couldn't see her face. Yep. And it was kind of not great for me. This was probably my least favorite look on the runway. I feel like it kind of has to be. I agree. So another quick commercial break, and then we'll be back with uh, the lip sync for your life and untucked. <laughs> so we get to the judging. I do think that like Kumail saying proportionizing might be my favorite thing. It's, I mean, yes. Proportionizing. Because I don't like it. No. But when Kumail said, Proportionizing. His voice yeah, was just yeah. so funny. I just, he could say something that's absolutely not funny and just make it hilarious. And I love it. Right, well, and so then the dramatic emotional piece of this. Well, yeah, so it starts and Ross is talking about how. It's like you're a dessert on the menu and I keep looking at you and thinking like, maybe that's just too sweet for tonight. I, I don't know. And that really triggers something in Blair. Yeah. And she starts to reveal that she was raped at a college party, and this is like the first time she's ever even talking about it. I've come from some like really dark moments in my life, and I want to lighten them up and become more positive. This is her processing it. Yes. This is the beginning of her journey Ab of processing absolutely. it. Absolutely. Uh, I'm actually very proud of you for being so vulnerable. And Rue says later, we've all had trauma and, and the first response is to put rainbows on everything and, and try and just cover it up and make it right. happy and then just make yourself happy. Right. And you have to go through it and process it to really move forward. And Rue said, you know, I'm really proud of you. Like, yeah. this is really, I'm proud of you for doing this and you're going to be an inspiration to other people. So I thought this was ultimately like really a good thing. I agree. So Eureka wins. Which was pretty obvious. I think so. Uh, unless she had just had an utter Awful disaster asset, on yeah. the runway. I yeah. think it was pretty clear yeah. that she was going to win. And then the Vixen and Blair are in the bottom. Yes. So they lip sync to I'm Coming Out yep. by Diana Ross. Yep. And I was like, yes, yeah. I love this song. Oh. And then the lip sync was like just kind of okay. For a good while, I was like, so double elimination? I thought the same thing. I thought, well, that is cruel. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like, after this big emotional like reveal and she just poured her heart out and be like so double elimination <laughs> but the vixen really turned it out later on i mean she at least pulled out all of her shots she of dancing did, and she did more with it yes i still thought it was messy she does like a sideways somersault yeah i was, I was confused a there barrel was a house <laughs> isn't that a thing a round barrel turn kick a roundhouse kick Shh. those are that's not what she did at all but uh, that is a thing. Yep. And yeah. then she did another. 
It seemed manic. Yes. The vixen seemed manic. Yes. And while she was like doing stuff, so I was like, okay, well, you're like doing stuff. So I guess you should win. She does like the tuba solo, which. Oh, well. They laughed at it and I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. A little, thank you, okay, thank you. Okay, it wasn't just me. I, I, I no, I was not I was a fan like, of that. Oh no, oh, oh no. This, for me, was not a very good lip sync. No, it wasn't great. Uh, Blair was, I thought, singing the wrong song, like, was... Well, she was also singing the wrong song. Well, she... <laughs> she did not seem to know some of those words. Well, I think it didn't help that her lips were very nude. Mm. And so you really can't see their articulation. Mm. I didn't think it helped. Sure. But also, she was singing it like it was a Aretha Franklin ballad. You know, sure. she was having like a an emotional and like I'm coming I'm, out I'm... is is emotional. Right. Like I, for me, this song is very happy. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like just like yeah. This is like every you know? wedding song. Like, it's like yeah. Yes, let's all have a party and dance. Yeah. It's so fun. And yes, yeah. she had just revealed this horribly you know traumatic event, and she was very emotional. Yes. So like I understand, but yes. I was also like I feel like. You took the wrong angle with the song, where instead of being like overly emotionally like, ah, she should have just been like, oh, I'm free. Sure. I just revealed this huge secret that I've been keeping That's inside. That's true, right. And I'm coming out and I'm free. Yeah. And like, yeah. if she had had done it like that. That's and just true, been like, like full of life. Just, and like, oh, yeah. I'm a new, I'm reborn, you know. Yeah. I'm getting like the goosebumps thinking about it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that would have been so good. That's and that's true. just not where, what angle she took. No. And I was like, oh, that's, that's a shame. Yeah. She was also giving me a lot of like, the I don't thing? want to call it interpretive dancing. It's literal dancing where it's like, and now I'm gonna like dance the words to the song, you know? It's like the dance you make up in fifth, fourth grade. Yeah, exactly. You're like, I wake up in the morning, eat like my breakfast, yeah. and I'm yeah. going <laughs> down the street, yes. driving my car. You know, it's like, wait, what's. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> is that is good to go? Okay, good. Dude. So anyway, I thought this was pretty messy on both sides. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, so the vixen stays and Blair yeah. goes home. Yes. Yeah. So this week on Untucked. Girl. I was excited because, well, so they sent the safe girls back and I was like, yes, Untucked is going to be so fun because Monique is back there. And then it wasn't at first. But then it was. To be completely honest, it was like I felt like I had to be dialed back, so. I didn't overshadow you guys. I was like, Monique, like, don't do this, girl. I was don't. Like, don't go down this road. Don't, don't do it. And then Asia is basically like, girl, you're safe in a look that you made in 30 minutes. There's girls out there in $10,000 looks that are sweating. And she's like, you know what? You're right. Let's move on. <laughs> right. Can I get just a cranberry juice, Bart Keep? He reminds me of this fine piece of trade back home. Both of us were in seminary school together. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> This, oh, this, Aquaria. This was, this was a role. Oh, I'm still confused because is she that dumb? Yeah, I was in seminary school. What's that girl? mean? Bible college. Oh, I was like, because I, I know Semin, but I figured sem seminary. <laughs> I'm so done with her. I don't Did know. she think it was semen school? I couldn't figure it out. I don't. Because I she said, I know no, what semen, semen is. Means. And, and I'm I was like, like that's. What? <laughs> Semen? Like, is that what she thought? I don't know. I was laughing so hard. Girl, I can't with you. That's too dumb. Anyway, let's keep talking. Let's keep talking. <laughs> I laughed She's so just hard. Like, no. I can't with her. I'm we're not, done. I'm not even addressing this. No, that's too stupid. No. You try to pray the gay way and nothing works. Starting hair school and then being very afraid to be around other gay men. My thoughts were, it was going to trigger something in me. This is one of the reasons I like Monique, where she'll have the, the whole time during the story, it was like funny and then like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. And then like funny and then sad and then funny. And, and and ultimately, she's triumphant. And so you're like, oh, I loved hearing that whole story because it took me on a journey. But she's talking about how, you know, she couldn't admit even to herself that she was gay. And I remember screaming on the inside, like, I can't, like, no. Like, my mom's a minister. I can't come out. There's nowhere. Now, meanwhile, I'm the cute boy at our church. So then you're just sucking dick. In the choir room. You know, like, it's just like, it just really goes up and down. I went to him looking for refuge, and the next thing I know, uh, uh. <laughs> and I was like, okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, continue to tell me all the stories. Yes. Yes. When she's talking in the confessional, she's just like, she's like, you know, I, you try to pray the gay away, and it does not work. It, it does, does not work, work, America. It doesn't change a thing. Nothing happens, America. Moms and dads that have gay children. Nothing changes. And then the top and bottom queens come back. And the the vixen is 
She is very sure that it's Ms. Cracker in the bottom. I mean, she... <laughs> they really were like, you didn't do so bad. It's just your team as a whole, is what they said to me. Really? Pretty. But she was so delusional, and I loved it because they kept cutting to the other queens that were the safe queens that were on stage. Oh, yeah. Being like... I knew that what they were saying to them, I didn't do those things. So I was like, okay, I'm not completely in hot water. So then they wheel out a TV and it's Eureka's mother and her twin sister. Yes. They're giving her pep talk. You chase your dreams, keep your head in the game, and you will win. But this one was not, really sweet. It's really sweet because she has cancer and, and she wasn't speaking last time we right. left, so she was so emotional about it. You my big teddy bear, you wake that on here. And I'm your number one fan. So it was very lovely and emotional and, and Eureka. It was like Eureka's week. You know? Oh, yeah. And then they were like, wait a minute. There's we've another, got another video. video. And it was like, oh, we've stored these all up. We clearly have these all ready to go. And yeah. Blair's yeah. leaving or possibly leaving. So we definitely have to get this one out there. I mean, it felt weird. It did. It's like, just show Blair's then. Yeah. Just show Eureka's a different week. Exactly. But we get another video from Blair's mom, and she's also lovely, and yeah. is just like, I'm your biggest fan, yep. and I love you, and, and you're in my heart. And... Oh, can I just put out a PSA real quick? Mm. If you're filming a video for someone, and it's going to be shown on oh, TV. Just do the, don't do portrait. Never, ever hold your iPhone like this. Never. Agreed. PSA over. Agreed. Pet peeve. <laughs> But she's a lovely woman who yes. supports her gay son, yes. and I was here for it. Yeah. We just want you to know how proud we are of you, that we love you. I feel you in my heart every day. Blair explains how close they are and that they're best friends, and then she goes on to reveal to the queens that weren't on stage her story about what right. happened to her. Right. And they all, you know, accept her into their bosoms. Yeah. I got to hug your neck, girl. You know how I am, girl. I have to hug your neck. Thank you. And also to have the courage to say that shit out loud yeah, because that is like 80% of the battle to just say it out of your mouth. Well, yeah, so then Eureka comes over to Miss Cracker who has very much kind of spent most of Untucked by the mirrors. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of a weird... What's going on? I've taken all the help I can get and... Cracker seemed disconnected. And I think you're gonna be okay, okay? Well, no, I, I know that I'm great. <laughs> okay. I really need to see through this shell that you're presenting. Yes. She seems like she has a wall up. Yes. And I'm ready to see like some vulnerability from her. Agreed. And it seems very analytical all the time. She talks about basically how, you know, she's a stand-up comedian, so them literally saying she's not funny is like the deepest cut for her, which I get. Yeah. Don't let that discourage you, girl, because you just weren't funny with other people. You're hilarious by yourself. No, you're funny when you're alone. You're funny when you're alone. <laughs> Which is rude either way. Like it's rude sure. to say as a comedian. You're only you, funny when you you're not be working with other funny people. Funny with other people. Right. But also, you're only funny when you're literally by yourself. Right. Bitch! But you know, I mean she wasn't funny this week. And that happens to all sorts of comedians. Like, you know, well, some Kumail said, like, you know, I can tell that she is a funny right. person, but she once the joke started not landing, she didn't regroup mm -mm. and and change on the whim. And, and be funny, you know? Right. Like, that's what you gotta do. Yeah, you have to read the audience and readjust. Yes, exactly. So she didn't do that. I think she's really talented. I'm not connecting with her on an emotional level. And that's that really key for me. For me. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully she will move past that and really, you know. I hope so. Yeah. I hope we get there. Yeah. I'm excited for next week because it seems like that could be a great challenge for her. Oh, yeah. So then they show the lip sync and Blair goes home and she's packing up and she has this huge like ruffled boa thing oh, wrapped yes. all around. It's huge, it's covering her whole body and then she has a backwards hat on and it looks like it was all in black and white and it looked like she was, um, did you ever see Children of Paradise? That old like French movie? Oh, it's amazing! It's three hours long and it's the quickest three hours. I mean, you're just like, and it was like shot during World War II in occupied France and they had to like sneak around. Anyway, it's amazing. Totally go watch that movie. But there's a mime in it who has like this huge, you know, the big wide mm. outfits and then he's got like the black cap oh on or whatever. God. And I was like, oh my God, she looks like the little mime from <laughs> It was really silly. So yeah, so Blair goes home. I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss her. I'm gonna miss she her. She's really sweet and talented. I think- I'm excited most about her potential. Yeah. And I so... like think she's talented and I'd like to see what comes. So exactly. we'll see. Yeah.
This was a really fun episode, though, I thought. Like, it was very jam-packed. It was jam-packed. There was a lot of emotional stuff. Yep. There was a lot of challenge. Yep. There was a lot of creativity. Yep. There was a lot of backstory. There was jokes. Like, I, I was just like, yes, to this all of this. This episode has it all. It it's really does. New York's hottest club. <laughs> It's urge. <laughs> <laughs> so please uh, subscribe, share. Thank you for joining us. Patreon. Uh, Snatch Game is next week. So excited. Very excited. And we will see you next Thursday. Cheers. Cheers. Proportionizing.